today we have a guest from the Liber Institute for, Liber Institute for Brain Development. Eugenia is going to uh, do a journal club presentation on this uh, deconvolution paper um, using blood RNA seq data. So welcome, Eugenia. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, thank you, Leo, for uh, inviting me, and also thank you for this uh, interest in, uh, in this uh, type of uh, deconvolution, which is uh, sort of, uh, I, I think it's not a mainstream yet, probably. Um, what, what does it mean? So I highlighted here basically the main part to me from this uh, paper, which is actually a pretty standard PGC uh, pipeline. Um, but they apply here as a method which uh, it's uh, very useful because it takes advantage from the big sample size that we have with bulk RNSC together with the depth of information that we can get from single cell uh, data. Uh, what does it mean in silico purification? If you go the next slide, I've been interested in this method because I confess I am more like a bulk rna -seq person. I worked mainly with bulk rna -seq. Obviously, is kind of obsolete these days. People are... Uh, getting more and more interested in single cell technology, in uh, spatial transcriptomics. Uh, to me, it's like I, I would rather have the middle ground because it's still a lot of information in bulk rna -C. Coupled with this one, with the uh, single cell in-depth uh, information, it could be much more useful. Plus that I am a sort of network person, as everybody knows, I like to analyze things together, not in uh, isolation. So because of that, I was thinking at some point, probably a couple of months ago or even more, what if we can have actually from bulk rna -seq, a sort of cell type specific RNA seq for each brain, for each sample that we have. I started to look on, on the internet, is actually possible no, or not? And I found this uh, that gives a sort of over, overview of RNA deconvolution methods and their application. If you go next slide. Okay, so this is in, in this figure, it's like the gist of this uh, overview. So basically, what is on the bottom right of the figure, this in silico purification is what they call some advanced techniques such as probabilistic models. Usually these are Bayesian models that can simultaneously estimate cell type specific gene expression profiles from bulk uh, data. And if you, uh, I don't know if you want to stop here, make a comment, or, or we can go to the next slide. They give a, a, literally a table with these uh, methods. And the last three of them are actually performing this kind of, uh, of uh, analysis. And I think others are, are also doing, uh, doing the same thing. And to me, the most interesting so far is actually Bayer's Prism. I don't know if you guys saw this uh, this method. It was published. Yeah, we, we used Bayer's Prism in our mm -hmm. benchmark. Oh, okay, so it's uh, you know better than than me if uh, it is a good method. I started the demo with uh, Bayer's Prism. I like it very much because it's uh, very well documented. It's also a blood. Uh, based uh, method, it's mo mostly for cells in the, in the blood, but they seem to do something uh, elaborate, to say so, and it's like, to me, seems like a good method. The package is working very well, at least at, at the demo level, and I was planning actually to, to use for our data. And uh, uh, to me, the idea is to take the cell types 
estimated imputed expression for each sample and to create networks which are this time instead of genes, one mat matrix for uh, uh, one sample, you would have six, eight, whatever, how many cell types you can actually uh, get from this, uh, these uh, methods. So, and, and they say here that uh, like, for instance, Blade, another, uh, another of them is flexible in, in the way that they uh, handle 20 cell, cell types. Uh, Bayes Prisma is handling 10. Uh, some of them are not so flexible in the way they cannot ex estimate more than two or uh, what, what they have on the last comment. Then the other thing that is really important about these methods is that what you use as a kind of single cell data. So some of these methods are using reference, sign signature reference matrices, which obviously are OK. It's nothing like a bad thing. This is what they do basically in this, uh, in this paper uh, we are discussing today. But it would be much more informative if you can, if you can get this from single cell like in your data. I don't know if it, it has to be from the same sample. I don't know if, if you use Bayes Prism, you probably Right, you can get single cell type the convolution from the same brain sample. Am I wrong or? Uh... Uh, so I think that I know base prism at least gets you like proportions. I, I yes. forget it. Yeah, but I don't think it does like the cell type cell type specific expression. Although they, they didn't. we didn't explore that to, sort of feature in our work, so. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing that, that that's the part that is very, very interesting. I mean, Bayes Prism has also, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the figure for them, but they, they have also that nice uh, figure with literally a prism in which you yeah. have an input uh, array and uh, yeah, they have nice art yeah. paper, yeah. Yeah, and then you, you get like uh, a sort of diffraction like in physics. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very nice method. So basically, this type of, uh, of methods, I see them as very useful. Uh, if we go on the next uh, slide, this is basically from, uh, from this uh, paper. And related to this uh, type of method, they use this B-Mind as a tool to estimate cell type expression from bulk rna for each individual. Well, <laughs> this has literally 10 lines of code. It's really undocumented. I wouldn't say badly documented, it's undocumented. What they say that is a tutorial is nothing than this figure and the line of the the functions how you apply, but I have to say it works. <laughs> I mean, you, I I did the, their example. It's like in two minutes you get what you want. Of course, the example has couple of genes, not too many, and it's a demo. But I am a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, okay or not, I mean, I would rather prefer to work with something that is better explained, better documented, uh, like Bayes Prism. So um, anyway, it worked. They got what they wanted. Uh, this paper is uh, it's very, it's very interesting in the way that um, they work with a lot of data. Of course, it's the first, the first thing because they work with data that is at this level and with live people, you need a sort of proxy for your, uh, for your RNA-seq, which is blood, which is absolutely debatable. And they, they admit, they say in the paper that, well, so it's a proxy. It's not the best one. 
and we will make a point that uh, I, I will make some comments at, uh, at some point. I put here the, the samples they use. Um, it's really unbalanced. I mean, they have bipolar disorders, over 1,000 people. They have 84 schizophrenia uh, individuals and control 600. I'm not sure if you can get much from, from this, but that, let's say that for bipolar disorder would be interesting. Uh, they have genotypes. Uh, I don't know if you know about this, the, the filtering of uh, genotypes uh, related to Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is quite lenient for, uh, for cases and they motivate this to me is like, okay, if this is what you think, probably you know better because you are in the genetic field and you know how how important or not important is this uh, this thing. Then they use cyber sort for cell type deconvolution with a predefined signature, which obviously is a blood blood based signature. Five hundred and forty seven genes for. 22 cell types, but they estimate only eight. Um, I have some experience with cybersortix. I use cybersortix. I don't know. <laughs> if I, if, I mean, if I like it or not, I have to read your paper <laughs> to see. Congrats, by the way, for your paper. <laughs> and I have to read it to see how CyberSort <laughs> is uh, uh, on, on that one. <sighs> it did the job. They, uh, they use B-Mind, this B-Mind, to estimate cell type expression from bulk rnsc by using these cell fractions calculated with CyberSort. And after that, it's just standard, uh, basically, PGC paper. It's just that this time, instead of having uh, bulk RNA seed from blood, they have cell types, which is very nice. And they do some kind of uh, cell type specific regressions with estimated cell type proportions and gene expression, uh, things that to me were. Uh, from a med medical point of view, they have issues. Pretty much that's it in terms of presentation.